Good morning. You know, speaking of that situation, don't you, you know this is coming, right? You see me coming for you and you don't really want to do this. You guys, now I think everybody's experienced this. You go to an event or a party or something like that and there's going to be somebody there and you know some topic's going to come up and you really don't want to talk about it. You really don't want to see them. And you know, you see them from across the room and you're, you're don't look at them, don't make eye contact. Right? And you, you glance back over and they're getting closer. And, oh, man. You know it's coming, right? You're going to have to talk to these people. And they're, they're smiling coming at you. They want to see you. And deep down inside, either something's happened in the past or, you know, I, I see a lot of people during the week. And if you've done this before, I'm not throwing you under the bus. But they'll try to explain to me why they weren't in church last week. I don't care. That's, you know, we always say, I don't care if you come to church every week, but when you want to come to church, give us a thought, you know? You guys do not need to explain to me why you don't come to church. So, I'm at Walmart, you know, and I'm going down this aisle, and there's somebody, and I turn on, and there comes somebody, and I know they're going to come up to me and explain to me why they haven't been to church. And I just, you know, it's not I'm trying to avoid you or anything. I know what you're going to say. And then finally you put on the smiley face and it's okay. And you give them a little lesson and it doesn't matter, right? You can do church at home. Church is not inside these walls. Sometimes we know we're going to have to talk to Jesus. And sometimes I think people are like this. If you haven't been to church in a while, and you're going to go to church, and you're going to see somebody, and they're going to know you haven't been to church for a while. You don't want to. You don't want to talk to them. You don't want to tell them what's going on in your life. Everybody knows what everybody's doing on Facebook these days, right? And you just don't want to talk about it. Some things you'd like to just forget. And you know, if you see a person, they're going to say, I'm so sorry to see, you know, you know the whole thing, right? It just starts all over again. And you're trying to avoid them. How many times are you like this? with God. You've done something, and you know, maybe you really don't want to go to church because you think God's going to be there, right? And all that crap you did since the last time you've been at church, I really don't want to talk about it. And I know that pastor's going to say something to convict me, and I don't want to hear it. Haven't we all been there? And all he really wants is for us to come home, to come back. God is not one of these people that you have to avoid based on something that you did or something like that. He's simply waiting for you. Now, uh, I'm going to use a, a rock star because I'm, I like old classic rock, no doubt about it. You know, Steven Tyler, if I saw Steven Tyler, I want to meet him. I would want to go up, I want to get a selfie, and I'll post that on Facebook and everything. Right? And, and back in the day when we were younger, I think there's some older hippies in here, you know, you would throw garments at them on the stage. Oh, I guess maybe just the women did that, huh? That's why we went to the concert. But yet, you don't really want to talk to God. This is how we should act towards God. Christ, God in the flesh. You should want to see him. And the reason you don't want to see some of these people from your past is you've done something or they've done something. You don't want to talk about it. You know, how cool would it be if you could see an old friend and they didn't know anything about your past? Didn't know any of the stuff you've been through? Didn't know about your relationships that went wrong or, or children that have done something? They didn't know anything. Now you're good with meeting them, right? about meeting new people? I think it's cool to meet new people. They don't know me. This is what Christ has done for us in the Father's eyes. He holds nothing against us. Now, wouldn't it be cool if all your old friends held nothing against you? Just come back to God. Just return to Him. If you walked into a party, if you walked into church and God is there, you don't have to turn away from him and be embarrassed. 
because of what Christ did on the cross, He just simply loves you. You know, I got all kinds of slides to back all this stuff up, but I don't feel like using them right now. And sometimes I'm not sure it's, it's effective. Sometimes it might just be easier for me to talk to you. Let's use one at least. Zechariah 1.3, would you put that up? And I'm going to use the, uh, the New Living Translation here. Therefore, say to the people, this is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of the Heaven's army. Can we just return to him? Can we just start over? He forgives us for the stuff that we've done. And this might seem so elementary to you people that have followed Christ for years. But you know, we get away from him too. The passage about him chasing after the one and leaving the 99 behind. And I've given a message on this before. I think it needs to be explained a little bit better. That one was part of the herd. That'd be you guys. This isn't somebody that's, that's he, he, he reached out so he could have 101. This was one of his hundred that got away. And he will, goes after him. He leaves the 99 to go after the one that was his that wandered off. That's us. When somebody says return to the Lord, it doesn't mean that, you know, you haven't been to church in years and now you need to get back there. It might. But it might mean that during the week when you're out there working in the workforce, you kind of slip away. Maybe you need to return to the Lord every week. Is that why you come to church? I hope so. When he's chasing after the one, it very well could be you on a regular basis and leaves the 99 because you're worth it. He doesn't care what you've done. He doesn't care where you've been. He doesn't care what you said. Because of what Christ did for you on the cross, it is gone. We don't have to avoid him at gatherings. We don't have to Look away from Christ when you think he's looking at you. He's proud of you. You ever been someplace to a party or an event like this and you actually did something to somebody and you feel bad about it and they're there and you do not want to talk to them. You don't want to ask for forgiveness. But we come into church like a place like this and it's the exact same thing. Sometimes we really don't want to go to church because, you know, they're going to tell me how God watches and does it and knows everything that I've done. And I really don't want to look at that cross. I don't want to think about him hanging on that cross for me. So you don't go, right? Just get it out of your mind. It'd be like being at a party and seeing somebody that you did something to them and you're ashamed of it and you leave instead of talking to them. Don't we do that? Now, the way you're looking at me, I'm the only person that's done that. And now you're thinking in your head right now, I remember when you left my party. I'm one of those people, when I'm ready to go, I stand up and say, I'm going. I'm done. This has been fun, but now it's over. <laughs> I do that. You know, it, it's, it's all about a relationship. It's not about this religion. You don't need to do everything just right. You come in here and light candles and take communion and all that. It's not about what you do. It's about the relationship that you have. And here's a time when you can look Jesus in the eye and say, I'm sorry, but I've returned to you. Last couple of weeks, we've been talking about changing the world. We can change the world. You know, if you want kindness, be kind. If you want peace, you be peaceful. If you want love, you be loving. One at a time, we can change this world. 75% of the people claim to be Christians. But you see, we want these things, but we won't do what's necessary to have them. Thank you for coming to church today. Maybe you do care. 
It's a start. Get close to God. I think the worship part of the church is huge. This is when I sit back there and I get all teary and I'm watching the lyrics and oh my goodness. It gets me. I hope it's doing that for you. To pull you back to God. Because this is where you'll find the peace that you want. This is where you'll find the kindness that you're looking for. This is where you'll find the love. And all you need to do is return to Him. Now, a lot of people want to return to Him once a year at Christmas. Christmas Eve services are huge, right? Some people do, you know, biannually. Is that what you call that? That'd be Christmas and Easter. And some people do maybe monthly. When you're having communion, I'll go. Or weekly, we come to church on Sunday mornings. See how we keep returning to God? When actually, for me, sometimes it's on a daily basis. You know, they they talk about uh, praying continually. Well, we all know that this is more symbolic because otherwise you die, right? You gotta you gotta eat and work and stuff. And I, I try to do this. I try to keep my mind occupied with biblical things and the church, and I pray when I can. And, and here's what happens to me. I hope I'm not the only person this happens to. I'll start to pray, and uh, into it about three or four minutes, I'm thinking about the farm or what Kelly's doing or where the girls are and what they're doing. And then I start like, oh yeah, I was praying. That's right. Well, then I got to get back to praying. You see, I'm returning to God. How about the times, and you all know me, my traffic issues and stuff, and I get myself in traffic and people are flipping me off because I'm not going fast enough or, you know, I'm not driving the way they want me to drive. And in my head, I'm giving it to them good. <laughs> right? And I, I don't know how to control your thoughts, but I'm mad. And then I have to return to God. The things I would like to say to them, the things I would like to do to them, the lesson I would like to give them, and I have to return to God. This morning, we're getting all ready. We have a microphone issue, and then the lights start blinking. And, and of course, the pastor, now you all think the pastor is like sitting in his office reading the Bible, right? This doesn't really happen. I, I'm trying to get things in order and everything, and things are going on. And I'm losing track, and I'm like, what is going on here? It pulls me away from God on a daily basis. Sometimes multiple times during the day. Returning to God isn't just for somebody that, that has maybe got raised in a church and then went off someplace. This is for all of you. You could be sitting in your chair right now saying, you know, I like to talk about my shirt, right? It's the only thing I have to talk about. That purple shirt doesn't look very good on you. You need to return to God. You see, your mind gets to, to go in a different direction. This is not just for people that you think have done years worth of things and say, well, they, they need to return to God. So do you, each and every day. It's extremely biblical. Um, in First and Second Samuel is the story of King David. Now, I'm a huge King David fan. He was really a pretty normal guy. And he was a man of God's own heart. And, of course, he messes up with Bathsheba. I'm sure most of you know this whole story. And his punishment was that the child was going to get ill and die. And what he does is he starts to grieve. What they would do is they would tear their clothes. They would put on what's called sackcloth. It's like a burlap. Cover themselves in ashes. They would actually sit in a pile of ashes. He did this because of what was happening. And it was because of his sin. And when the baby died, he actually got up, he quit fasting, and it says he went and changed his clothes. So now you know what he was doing, right? He rips, rips the garment because of his sorrow. He gets up and he changes the clothes and he goes and worships the Lord. You see how he returned to God? He went through a period of grieving, being sorrowful, and then he returned to God. Let's us do that. Let's do it 
multiple times a day, when our mind starts wandering, when we start going down a path that we shouldn't be going down. Last week I talked about you need to feed some things and you need to starve some things. Sometimes we need to return to God multiple times a day. You want peace, right? Everybody wants peace. This is where you'll find it. You want the world to be a better place. This is where you find it. You return to God. Tell him you're sorry. He's the one at the party that you really don't want to see because of all the stuff that you've done. And all he wants to do is see you. He's the one I was just talking about that is the fan of the rock star that wants to throw his garments at you. And you're trying to avoid him. You're afraid of him that he's going to, you know, punish you for things that you've done. And he's the one that wants to take a selfie with you. He's chasing you around the party. I just want to talk to you. Where are you going? Come here. Just, just let him come to you. Return to him. That's where you'll find all these things that you really, really want. Don't you all want a friend that'll understand everything that you've been through? Won't judge you for it? That's the friend you're looking for. Not the one that's going to keep bringing up everything you've ever done. Hey, remember back when you did this? You know, I just got overthinking about that. He's the friend that you all want. It's this relationship. It's not about coming to church. It's not about how good you do or, or what you give to the poor. Those things all come along with the good relationship. You need the relationship first. But how can you have it if you're avoiding him, not thinking about him, not talking to him, not listening to him? That's one of our biggest problems. Now we've all had this friend, right, that walks up to you and says, I told you so. I knew this was going to happen. He's not like that. Those are the people you're trying to avoid. And he's not like that. He's not going to bring up a bunch of stuff that you did. You can simply return to him and find all the things you really wanted in a friend. A good friend. The kind of friend that you really want everybody to be. Sometimes you're trying to avoid somebody and you know they really did turn out to be that kind of person. They just wanted to talk to you. They haven't seen you in a long time. They weren't going to bring up anything. They weren't going to bring up what you did to them or what they did to you. They simply just wanted to start over. Just forget about the past. It's over. I don't even want to talk about it. See, even saying I don't want to talk about the past brings up the past. Wouldn't you love to just start over with some of your relationships? You know, sometimes you, you were dating somebody and that didn't work out. And then you go to these events and somebody walks up to you. and you're, Now you're dating somebody new. They walk up and say, hey, I thought you were with Joe. And he's like, who's Joe? You know, don't you wish that everybody would just stop talking about this kind of stuff? It's over. It's done. That's the kind of relationship you have with Christ. Quit trying to avoid him. He's trying to talk to you. He's trying to take a selfie with you. All he wants to do is talk about what's going on in your life. All the good stuff we talked about. Can't we just be positive? He's the positive one. And we won't do what's necessary to get that. And you can start today. It's extremely simple. Return to him. Sometimes Christians get themselves into a rut. And it's the same old thing every week. You know, a preacher just keeps talking about the same guy. Convicts me every time I go. It's always the same. You don't have the relationship that you should if those are the things you're worried about. You don't have to worry about what the person next to you is doing. You should have the kind of relationship with him that's fresh and new every day. It's not about coming here. It's about being with him. 
Matthew 27, 54. Would you put that up? I'll use a couple of these. So when the centurion and those with him, these were the people that were at his crucifixion, who were guarding Jesus, saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, Surely this was the Son of God. This is the kind of friend you're all hoping for. This is the kind of friend that won't talk about all that stuff you don't want to talk about. And you're trying to kind of avoid him. You know, is he really that good? Can somebody be that good, that loving? It's beyond what we can comprehend. So we ask ourselves these questions. These gentlemen, I'll call them gentlemen, probably shouldn't. They were standing at the cross and they crucified him and they were actually jabbing him stuff to make sure he's dead. You know, and they broke their legs if they didn't die quick enough. Well, they didn't have to break Jesus' legs, but these were not good men. And all of a sudden they realized that this was the Messiah. And he was exactly who he said he was. And he's exactly the same today as he was then. He is this good friend that you all really want. The one you want to hang out with. The one that will give you the things that you really desire. You'll find the peace with him. It will change the world if you'll just return to him on a regular basis. Not once a year. Not just on Sunday mornings at church. How about that drive home from church when somebody cuts you off? Instead of flipping them off or something, return to God. Put that out of your mind and say, thank you for protecting me, Father. Wouldn't that be cool? Isn't that the kind of friend you want? Isn't that the world that you want to live in? Maybe he cut you off by mistake. Maybe he's on the way to the hospital. Baby's being born. I, I can't even think of anything right now that... You don't know what's going on with them. And they don't know what's going on with you. What if they knew you were this kind of Christian that was forgiving and kind and gentle and loving? Don't you want to be known for those things? Maybe you're the one at the party that people are trying to avoid. How'd you like that label? We all got these people we're trying to avoid at events. What if you're that person? Because you're always bringing up stuff. Stuff that I don't want to talk about anymore. Jesus is the friend that you want. The true good friend. They have whistles over there, you know. Yeah. You know, I could say something really weird right now, but I kind of like them. Those are my friends over there. I don't care what they're doing. Make all the noise they want. They're my friends. Is the worship team in here? Nah, I'll keep talking. This is what everybody wants. You guys can get ready. I'll, I'll probably kill some time, but go ahead and start getting ready, will you? Second Chronicles 7, 4, 7, 14. If my people, who are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. You think we need that? 75% of this nation should be doing this. Return to him, and he will heal their land. Their land very well could be your household, your job place. It's where you want to be, isn't it? A healed land where there's kindness and goodness. You have to participate in that. We can do a lot better we need to return to the Lord more and more often, all the time. When your mind starts to wander in a direction that's not good, return to Him. When you see somebody you really don't want to talk to, return to Him. 
and return to him so that you can be the one that people aren't trying to avoid. Change your ways. Put up Joel 2.13, will you? Now I'm going to use the New Living Translation on this. Just because it's easier for everybody to understand. Don't tear your clothes in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. Let's just stop there for a minute. This goes back to what I was telling you about. In their sorrowful moments, they would rip their garments. They would put on sackcloth and sit in ashes and they would tear their garments. He's saying, don't do that. Then it goes on to say, return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. He's not the God that you think he is. He is loving and gentle. He is not going to punish you for what you've done. He's not going to be that person that remembers all the junk you did. To relent. To relent actually means to abandon harsh treatment. Isn't that the friend you want? Shouldn't that be the friend that you should be? He's eager to relent. Why can't we be like that? That will change the world. While the worship team sings this song, I want you to come into a relationship with Christ. And I want you to ask him, are you the man everybody says you are? Are you the friend I thought you were? Are you the friend that will never, or all, I'm sorry, will always love me? Are you the one I can trust? And he'll say, I am. Who doesn't want a friend that will give them joy, that will give them peace, that will give them rest? Everything you've ever wanted in a friend. And he's dying to meet you. Whether he's known you before or not, don't you want a friend that you can walk up to and know that he's not going to ask you about all that crap that happened to you? He's not going to say, where you been? He's not going to say, why'd you do all those things to me? Don't you want a friend that you would walk up to and, and he say, you know, I don't want to talk about all that stuff. Let's just go have some fun. I don't want to, I, I don't care about all the stuff you're about ready to explain to me. Let's just go have a good time. He's that kind of friend. If you don't want that kind of friend, I don't know what I can tell you, but I think we all desire it. We love to be in relationship. We love to be together. And he's the one that you can say and do anything. Don't we all want a friend like that? You can even tell him if you're not happy with what's going on. I'm mad at you. How could you let this happen to me? He'll explain it to you. Give him some time. Now you see you're actually being the one that everybody's trying to avoid because he doesn't want to talk about that stuff. He's in complete control. You can trust this kind of friend. This is the kind of friend that loves you so much. It doesn't matter. Wouldn't you like the kind of friend that you could walk up to and say, I'm sorry. And he'd say, it's okay. And wouldn't you like to have the kind of friend that you could walk up to and say, you know, you're every bit of the person that I've heard that you are. He'd say, it's okay. And you could say, you know what, from now on, I want this kind of a relationship with you. Because now I know how good a friend you are. And he'd say, thank you. You're welcome to come with me. Let's take a selfie. Don't you all want that? You realize what I just said to you is your salvation? Admit you're a sinner? Believe Christ was who he said he was? And from this day forward, be in a committed relationship with him, an honest one, a loving one? If you said yes to wanting a friend, to all those things, you're saved. Just be genuine, because he is with you. 
Would you put up my summary slide? I'm not even sure I said all these things on this summary slide. It's about relationship, not religion. Jesus is a good friend. A good friend doesn't dwell on the past. Return to the Lord today. You can do it right now. Just ask him to come back into your life to be that Messiah that you've heard that he is. I care. Or I wouldn't be weeping. Yeah, I'm the weeping pastor. That's going to make the newspaper, isn't it? I've been known for a lot of things. and I'll take that one. Just surrender to him. Because he truly is the... Oh, time's up. The good friend. <laughs> or maybe it was the evil one telling me, we got to get rid of this guy off the stage. He truly is this kind of a friend. And you have a relationship with a friend. A friend isn't somebody that wants to make sure you do everything just right or they're not going to be your friend. That's not a friend at all. And that's not Christ either. He just simply wants to hang with you. He's the kind of friend that you all want. Try it today. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for sending the best friend I've ever had to this world. God, thank you for the friend that I have in Christ that doesn't care what I've done doesn't care where I'm at. He wants to help and doesn't drag in all that past stuff that I don't want to talk about. God, thank you that the Messiah is the example of the love that you have and want us to have for others. Father God, help us along the way and remind us through your Holy Spirit that we need to return to you each and every day. It's in Jesus' awesome name we thank you. Amen.